Hi, welcome to Budget Mother Hours, and today we're looking at vaccines and platforms and cantonary and things like that on my improved inglenook shunting layout. So please stay with us, um, quite a bit to, to talk about today. So the vaccines are relatively simple from a material point of view, they are just of cuts of hardboard, uh, which I got free as it happens. Uh, it is Budget Model Railways after all. Um, I also got quite lucky with this, so I really like these back scenes. Um, these are, I think, the Gauge Master um, photographic ones. And I just had a little piece left to go on the end, uh, and it blends in quite well. Um, cut down a bit of um, corrugated iron fencing, actually, from a double O layout, but it doesn't look too bad in there. And that's because these are six inches tall, uh, which is there. And, and I wanted to just obviously cover the gap, so I've got the little wall in there as well. Now, I only had that off cut. I'm just going to move the camera. Um, which means that I needed sky for this, which doesn't look too bad, but it's not a very good transition here. So I'm going to have to add, I don't know, a chimney or something just to hide that little bit. And then because I'm trying to do it on the cheap, I did have another bit of sky. But again, the transition's not great. Uh, it doesn't look too bad from here, but there's a bit of a join. So we'll, we'll put a chimney in there. Um, to hide that bit of back scene um, but then not too bad so the very tall buildings mean that I don't really need much more back scene and just having that off cut left from a previous project um, has been quite serendipitous actually so and obviously the big change since the last uh, video is the platform area and this is where engage gets really interesting because of course you've got four times as much space uh, and everything's half the size um, so this is only three centimetres wide. In reality, it could have been two centimetres, but even three centimetres doesn't look too bad. And it then gives me the chance to have a little bit of a uh, road area here. Uh, and I've got coming from train tracks uh, and Cato some nice platform shelters and bus stops and things, street lights to make this area look uh, a little bit more detailed. Um, got a bit of a transition there then into the bigger platform. Uh, and I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, so originally I was going to bring it right to the edge and it was the realisation that, come on, you're thinking in N-gauge here, it can be narrower. And that enabled me then to have the little bit of the road scene there. Now, of course, if you really wanted, you could use a narrower bit of board and do away with quite a bit of this. But this happened to be a standard size board, um, 80 by 23 uh, centimetres. So I've got that little bit of room. Uh, and that shows you the track plan quite nicely. Uh, the other change then, at this end... is I've got one of our controllers built in. Again, just glued hardboard. Um, I like putting them this way up because then the slider switch is that direction and that direction. Um, and this will just be a little bit of a fiddle yard area. And you can see the, the back of the tunnel mouth there. So let's show you the front. Bit of a strange angle, but it's the best way I can do it. So I put a couple of uh, stone buttresses in and that's actually a double O, one of our 3D printed bits of um, girder bridge. Just to give you a, sort of a, a bit of a tunnel portal, but not the usual obvious brick tunnel portal. Uh, it's a bit more urban, which I'm quite pleased with. Oh, and I've also done the level crossing there, uh, just simple bits of card. And then that gives you quite a nice shot of uh, the layout. So as I say, some of the other plans, I've got a nice little, it's actually a War Games resin truck there that paints up quite well coming out of there. Um, I have got a barrier there, but I've got some street lights on order and things like that. And obviously I've got the cantonary masts now on here. Now what I've done deliberately is space them out so that I can get to the points and to uncouple. And they're on curves because I can't really couple or uncouple on curves. Um, so they've been very carefully placed um, so they don't interfere with the operation of the layout. Although I did have fun putting the bridge in there with that particular mast so hopefully in the next video uh, i'll have received some of the extra bits um, and then it'll be beginning to look pretty much complete um, i'm still enjoying my n um, i'm still tinkering a little bit with double o um, and a teeny bit of o but mostly n at the moment um, i've got a bit of a rant video planned about a lot of this that's being spoken about about the hobby and one of the things i'm going to be saying is actually probably where the, the hobby went wrong a number of years ago was either not doing TT sooner or not embracing N sooner um, because of the space uh, issues in a lot of modern homes. Interestingly, 
Um, I was talking to a really helpful guy at Kerno Models. They, they, he got a figure that the model railway hobby in Japan is 10 million people, whereas in the UK it's 1 million. It's worth pointing out that the big scale in Japan is N, and Kato do a system, and as does everybody else, it's easy to take apart and use and make small layouts. Just makes you think when we stuck the only country in the world doing double O, whether that's the root of a lot of the issues, albeit that I personally believe the hobby is booming, just not in a way uh, that the traditionalists like. But more of that anon. Thank you for watching. Uh, another update out soon.